The dynamic island is such a low key, useful feature to have on the iPhone that I never quite appreciated enough until I picked up my iPhone again after using an Android phone for the last few months. So in this video, I wanna share with you the top 14 ways to use a dynamic island in like actual real world use, as well as a couple of quick tips on how to actually use and interact with the dynamic island. Because not many people realize, for example, that if you don't want to see something in the dynamic island, you can just swipe across and dismiss it. Now, I actually did this once by mistake and thought I'd dismiss something that I actually wanted to keep and then realized again, you can just simply swipe back to bring it back again. So you can have up to two apps running in the dynamic island at once. Say you've got uh, music and a countdown timer, but I have noticed that if you have uh, two timers, for example, you can't display them both at once. And if you have more than two apps open at any one time that works with the dynamic island, it can get pretty difficult to control which ones actually display in there. It's meant to be like the most recent two Two apps, but I found on a lot of occasions that just doesn't work. And some super basic controls here, but you tap once on the dynamic islands and that will open up the app in full screen view. But a tap and hold will give you a small pop up window, usually with some like shortcut controls, so you don't need to go into the full app. So I'm going to run through some of my favorite apps and use cases for the dynamic islands, and hopefully you'll see at least one, maybe two, that you didn't already know that you'll find useful. The first one is an obvious one play music or podcasts from any music app, you know, Apple music, Spotify, podcasts, and it will show up in the top here. Now you can tap and hold to get to the quick controls to play, pause, resume, skip, and of course, tap once to open the full app. Now I'm not actually gonna say that again because it's the same for every app here. Tap once, the full thing opens, no need to repeat myself each time here. Now the next thing and genuinely useful thing that I found is another music one, but it's when wearing headphones and you can briefly see the headphones connect and the battery level up there in the dynamic islands. Now this is so useful as someone who has a pair of in-ear headphones uh, specifically for the gym each day. It's really useful to know when they're running low so I can you know, remember to throw the case on charge when I get back in the car or at home. Now it does also show up when your headphones reach a low battery level, but I find that the notification disappears pretty quickly that I often miss it. You know, your phone's typically in your pocket already when you hear that notification. But when I don't miss it, it is when I'm putting in my headphones because you know, you're probably on your phone already choosing what you want to listen to for that you know gym session. So that little graphic right there, super useful. Also, speaking of music, another handy one is when I open Spotify whilst sat next to uh, an AirPlay speaker, like a you know, HomePod, and the dynamic island pops up asking if I want to AirPlay to something nearby. Again, one tap and I can play on a nearby speaker. Super, super easy. Now, next is one that I think is quite underrated, and that is Uber. And I believe this also works for Lyft as well. Now, it will show the time until your ride picks you up. Again, super useful because, you know, if you're waiting in line for an Uber, then you're probably sat there like, waiting, probably playing on your phone already message people or you know whatever you're doing so it is really nice not to have to keep going in and out of the uber app just to check you know how far your ride away is and then when you are in the uber it shows you the time that you'll arrive and if you again tap and hold you get more of a like, progress indicator that also shows you where you are in your journey just excuse the poorly filmed footage here. This was shot at midnight, as you can probably see after a very long day of flight delays, but you get the idea here. Oh, and also similarly with food delivery apps, which will show you how long until your food gets here. Also super useful. But speaking of flight delays, now a number of airlines like United support the Dynamic Island in their own apps, but there are also third-party flight apps which are again, super useful. So on said day of those flight delays, I was using an app called Flighty to keep an eye on you know, what was going on. And I found that I was getting updates to my phone way before they were showing on the boards on the airports. Now this one is a paid subscription. It's like 50 pounds a year or so. But if you fly a lot, this is well worth the cost. Now you can get updates to your flights, gate information, delays, even predicted delays from your flights. And it also shows you your seat number in the dynamic island. Really, really useful again. All again within that little dynamic island, which again, if you're sat in an airport waiting, super useful without needing to like, constantly go into your airline's app and refresh to see if you missed something or you know, having to constantly get up and keep checking the boards every like 20 minutes or so. And so even though this is you know, 50 pounds a year or so, as someone who just spent 400 pounds, I think it was on like rebooking flights and another Uber after my flights were delayed, then canceled, then rebooked, all sorts of horrendous stuff. I think it is well worth it to give you the best chance at getting ahead of what's going on in your flights. And like I said before, the more you travel, the more it's worth using some form of app that can keep you updated on what's going on. Now, of course, you're probably already aware that countdown timers show up in the dynamic island as well. So you just start a timer, swipe up for it to go up to the top, and you can then you know pause, cancel it if you tap and hold on it. But 
Another great way that I've used Dynamic Islands has been when paying to park my car and then being able to keep an eye on how long I have left. And it's not like you keep getting out your phone to you know check how long you had left on your car, but when you are naturally checking your phone for notifications or messages or emails, being able to you know at a glance remind yourself that you only have 15 minutes left or what have you is a uh, very, very handy dandy reminder because a few times I have totally lost track of time and not realized and then been stung with a parking ticket. So, um, so yeah, that one is very, very cool. And there's also a number of sports apps like the NFL app where you can pin games to the Dynamic Islands to see, you know, before it starts, what time the game does start and then keep track of the scores if you can't watch the live game. There's gym workout apps like Heavy, which I've been using for pretty last three or four years now or so, where it will count down your rest timer between sets using the Dynamic Islands. And then again, a tap and hold will show you what the next exercise is. You've also got the new flashlight or torch, depending on which country you live in. <laughs> and tapping on this will expand to give you more control. So swiping up and down will change the brightness and swiping left to right will change how thin or how wide that light is. Just in case you want to you know, a really bright but also really focused beam of light instead of just a you know a general wash of lights. Now I use this almost every day when I walk upstairs to bed at like you know, midnight, trying not to wake anyone else in the house with these you know, bright torch lights that it would it did previously. Navigation also goes up into the Dynamic Island for both Apple and Google Maps. Very very impressive. As soon as you swipe up out of you know either of these apps, they will go into the Dynamic Island so you can see the next turn you need to take. And again, if you tap and hold, you'll get just a little bit more information on those directions and the street names and those kind of things. Now, if you ever screen record on your iPhone, Dynamic Island puts this little red dot up into the top. So again, you can quickly get to and stop the screen recording. Just love how quick and easy it is to do that. But outside of these, there are of course, plenty of other apps. You've got Pixel Pals that puts like a Tamagotchi-like animal in the Dynamic Island to you know feed and play with. You've got Hit the Island, lets you use the Dynamic Island to play a fun game. And apps that turn the Dynamic Island into a quick short cuts area, there's quick access to your notes or to see your clipboard history. Maybe let me know down below in the comments what your favorite Dynamic Island apps or use cases are. I hope that that gave you some new ideas on how to use a Dynamic Island. Subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye-bye.